All right, here we go. Acquisition is easy, part two. This is part two video. Um, this is a three-part series in part one. I talked about contractors right again. My new investors, my aspiring investors, maybe y'all had done a couple deals. You're like, oh my God, it's so hard to find good deals. It's so hard to come up with the money and I got to do all these programs and NACA and you're doing all this different stuff because you don't know how to get your deals funded. You don't know how to keep consistent deal flow. And I just want to tell you, guess what? Acquisition is the easiest part. And I don't say that to dis discourage you. I just want to let you know that there is hope that you're going to get to a point in time where you've developed a skill set, where you run the reps and you can go out and acquire properties like it's nobody's business. OK, and I could tell you that emphatically because I've done it over 17 years. I raised millions of dollars, closed hundreds of deals and my students all around the world do the same. OK, so in part two of this video, part one, we talked about contractors. If you, I'm telling you right now, if you have not watched that video, go back and watch it. But in part two, we're going to talk about um, property management companies. OK, for those of you that want to buy cash flow. So <clears throat> when we look at the three areas that have cost us the most as investors after acquisition, OK, contractors, number one, that's Achilles heel. I don't care if you cash flowing, if you flipping, if you don't have good contractors, you cannot win. That's why we covered that one first. But right behind that, if you want to be successful at rental properties, you need a good property management company. Okay. Now, there's a few things that you got to start figuring out about this particular property management company to make sure that you're protecting yourself against all of the, the, the ways in which you can lose money or not earn enough uh, by way of who managing your properties. Okay. So the first one, and you guessed it, is fees. Like what, what are their fees, right? A long time ago, we had a student who came into the program that got their first rental property and their property management company was literally sending them no money every month. Like they were collecting rent and sending them no money every month. And every month they figured out some new expense or a project, pulling trees out of the, it was crazy stuff just to justify them having um, expenses, right? Now, I know y'all wondering like, B, but why would they ever do that? Well, here's the thing you gotta understand. Part of this fees that I'm referring to is maintenance and um, uh, what do you call it? Maintenance and um, I just put other expenses. It's, it's escaping me right now. If somebody know it in the comment, let me know. Maintenance and other expenses. What do I mean by that? So you have your traditional maintenance, which is, you know, tenant car, got a plug toilet, got a, you know, a faulty faucet. Um, the heat's not working, those things. OK, but then there's other stuff that they also can do, like. Um, changing out uh appliances they can uh do cabinetry work i mean they can depending on the type of property management company it could get pretty robust in the type of repairs that they may need to do may need to do right drywall repairs painting uh plump all, all different type of stuff that that go outside of what the normal um, maintenance would be well why is that important it's important because of this reason property management companies while they do make their money off of the, the monthly fee or management fee. The bulk of their money really comes from this right here, though. So there could be potential upcharge for um, the cost of goods. So let's just say, you know, they got to replace a $90 toilet. They could charge you $150 for that toilet. They could charge you $200 for that toilet. They could charge you $300 for that toilet. And so one of the first things that you need to do 
when you go in to these property management companies is ask questions You want to ask questions about what are their, what are their fees, right? So number one, what's your management fee? Typically, somewhere between eight to ten percent is going to be good. Okay, the more that you get into multifamily, right, your door count expands. You know that number gets smaller because they're doing more volume. But single family, ten percent is like the industry standard. Okay, for a single family property. Excuse me, but then you want to find out right after that, what's your maintenance cost structure? How much is your markup? Now, some companies are going to be taking it back that you even asking that kind of question. Other ones, um, they'll respect that you asked them that and they should be forthright and forthcoming and telling you that, you know, if they if they charging you an extra 10 percent on doing repairs at the property. I think that's fair. Right. But if they start marking stuff up excessively, 20, 30 percent, well, you could collect all the rent you want to collect. But on the back end of every month, they having these these expenses and these expenditures against your income, you're not going to collect any money as a landlord. Okay. And so, um, this is another critical piece. They need to call for expenses over X amount. They need to call for expenses over X amount. Like you need to establish what that is. You know, for some of you, maybe $200 per door, right? Depending on what the management situation is, that anything over this $200 that you allot for them to spend, y'all need to have a conversation about it, right? To make sure that they're not just out there doing $1,000 repairs on your property that you didn't approve. People lose money every day from this stuff, y'all, okay? Matter of fact, if this is helping you, like, subscribe, and please make sure you share this with some people. I'm, I'm trying to save y'all a ton of money here. Okay. Now, uh, so your fees, right? They need to call for expenses. Um, you also want to make sure that they maintain transparency. Okay. Maintain transparency. You want to be able to get in there at any point in time throughout the month and see what's going on with your property. The maintenance, the calls from the tenants, the, the rent situation, are they collecting, are they not, are they behind, all the rest of it, which brings me to another critical piece. Um, managing delinquents. Like managing delinquents, what's the process? Somebody, your tenant doesn't pay, like what happens? Because, and, and here's why that's so important. Because one will say, well, obviously we got to evict them. Yeah, but that's not a straight line either, right? So in different markets, it's going to require different um, triggers. Could be a seven day uh, notice, could be a 10 day notice, right? Could be a 30 day notice. These are all notices provided to the tenant that starts the process in the eviction process. Right. In my market, when the rent moratorium was lifted in Detroit, you know, a year ago, it took us six to eight months to evict the tenant because they were given uh, concessions to the tenants. The courts, the courts were where they were leaving them in. They, they would they would postpone the first um, court hearing by default. So they will automatically have like 120 days before they even see the judge. And then another 60 days to get them out. So it was it was a nightmare. We had to adjust. We adjust our buy-in, our buy box due to that. But what I'm telling you is that you need to understand what's their process because if they're if they're if you're already not getting paid and the property management company doesn't have a succinct process in place to move and push the eviction along, then you're losing money out of both ends, right? If you got um a tenant not paying and you paying all these expenses and probably a mortgage then you need to know what's happening expeditiously. The best way to know all of this is to get educated, y'all. Like I, I teach this at on, on such a micro level inside our program, right? Because you can't go out here making hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of investment and you don't even know the basic fundamentals and the intricate fundamentals of how you need to protect your investment protecting you and your investor. It just don't make logical sense that we would gamble 
and risk spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on an investment when we don't even know this stuff. Like we got we got to do better than that, y'all. And if you somebody that's out there and you don't understand all of these fundamentals, I got just the place for you to come. OK. We have a five day challenge once a month. The next one is upcoming by the time you watch this video. OK. On day one, I'm going to teach you guys the difference between traditional and remote investing to show you how to scale your business um, through remote investing. OK. On day two, I'm going to teach you guys a seven figure formula, literally in four or five steps, how to go and build a seven figure real estate business in 12 months and doing it the right way. OK. I know you're like, but I don't have money to do that. That's what day three is for. I'm going to show you the psychology of becoming an OPM magnet and how to go out and, and attract more capital and raise more capital than you need than you ever know what to do with. Okay, It'll blow your mind when you figure out how simple it is to go out and raise capital when you know how to have the right conversations with people. This is how 90% of our students do their deals with no money out of pocket. On day four, I'm going to teach you the time freedom cash flow formula. Everybody has a magic number. We're going to figure out yours and show you how to use real estate to literally free yourself from work, your business, or whatever other environment that you want to retire from, okay? And on day five, we're going to build a customized investment plan just for you because your, your, your goals are unique to you. Everybody in different seasons of life. And so we teach you fix and flip wholesale and cash flow and how to use other people's money to do so, so that specifically it suits your needs based on what you're trying to accomplish at this point in time in your life. Click the link in the description, okay? Go sign up for the challenge. If you want to build a six and seven figure business over the span of 12 months using other people's money and doing it the right way with real fundamentals, y'all, this stuff is so critical. Otherwise, you just, you you gambling. Like, why gamble? Okay, we want to make educated risks. www.iflipchallenge.com uh, or click the link in the description and you can bring your spouse, you can bring a partner. And listen, for those that go out and buy the VIP ticket, it's two ninety seven. dollars You get a 10 times better than money back guarantee. You get to get coached by me live each day in addition to what I told you I'll teach you each day. Um, you get coached by me for an hour each day, which is normally $10,000 an hour, okay? So you get the VIP ticket to the event. You get to bring a partner or your spouse. And on Friday of the challenge, if you feel like you didn't get $2,970 worth of value, I would give you your money back. It's a 10 times better than money back guarantee. You don't hear that nowhere. Either I'm, a, either I'm extremely good at what I do. I'm a foolish businessman. I'll let you choose which one it is, but I de-risked it all. Okay. Come learn this stuff the right way. I'm just passionate about making sure you guys are getting the stuff to go out here and be successful. This is, this business has forever changed my life and my lineage as well now. Right. And I want other people to be in that position. So like, comment, share this video. If it helped you, I will see you in part three.